Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clay, and I'm the Bucks Believer. Last night was a bit of an unorthodox game as the Bucks are without Giannis Antetokounmpo, Dante DiVincenzo, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Bobby Portis, and PJ Tucker, leaving them with just eight players to suit up for the game. Many of these players were inexperienced and had never played much more than 10 or 15 minutes in an NBA game before, but because of some excellent effort given by the guys and some pretty solid coaching decisions by Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks were able to remain competitive and push the New York Knicks to a really close game that really wasn't in, well, was in doubt up until the last minute or so where the Knicks were able to pull away and win with a final score of 102 to 96. Since this is a very odd game, this video is going to be a little bit different from my usual post-game recaps as I won't be able to make too many takeaways as to what the season will look like moving forward because only three of the Bucks' regular rotation players and just one regular starter suited up for this game. So instead, I'm going to talk about each of the eight players that played today and dive into both how I think they did today as well as what I think they can bring to the Bucks in the future. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. We'll get it going with a trio of Bucks um, forwards and centers who put up triple doubles today, starting with Thanasis Antetokounmpo. Uh, you hear the last name there, Antetokounmpo. Uh, you would think it was Giannis based off of the stat line because Thanasis was outstanding today. He had 23 points, grabbed 10 rebounds, and dished out 5 assists on 8 for 15 shooting and 4 for 5 shooting from beyond the arc. He also was excellent defensively where he picked up 2 steals. Thanasis did a great job at the top of a 2-3 zone that Coach Mike Budenholzer decided to throw out there for the entire game. I'm assuming that that was just the easiest route to take defensively against a New York Knicks team because these this particular set of Bucks players had almost never practiced together and I'm sure had never been on one side of a scrimmage. So this was a pretty new thing. To, so to go with a pretty conventional defense that's pretty easy to play was a good choice from Budenholzer and it did a great job in limiting the Knicks to just 102 points. Thanasis was at the front of that 2-3 zone and he did a great job of putting ball pressure on the Knicks ball handlers and forcing them into committing some turnovers. Thanasis was also great on offense. The Bucks were running some plays for him to be shooting jump shots off of movement and well, let's just say that's not something that would occur in a usual game. Thanasis did a great job of hitting those shots though, and he also did a nice job of attacking closeouts, getting to the basket for some easy finishes as he did throw down two or three dunks in this game, and he also found some teammates on the perimeter for some easy jump shots. So yeah, Thanasis was terrific tonight, he led the way for this Bucks team, and clearly took on a bit of a leadership position as well as he did a great job of keeping the younger guys under control, keeping them locked in and focused on the game, and that led to a bunch of those guys having pretty solid outputs in today's game. The biggest standout of the rookies had to be Jordan Nora, who is the second Bucks player to put up a double-double. Nora scored 21 points and grabbed 10 rebounds, shooting 7 for 18 from the field and 4 for 8 from beyond the 3-point line. Nora was ice cold to start off the game and couldn't seem to buy a bucket. But as the game wore on, and especially the first in the latter part of the first half, Nora really got hot and started hitting some incredibly difficult shots. He has really elite range as he's able to shoot almost all the way out to the 30-foot 30, uh, 30 mark. And that's really impressive for a player as young as Jordan Nora is. Moving forward, I view him as a player who's going to be an elite sharpshooter on catch-and-shoot opportunities and can also attack a closeout and get himself into position to both score in the mid-range and at the basket. I think a uh, Gary Trent Jr. type player is an interesting comparison for Jordan Nora. And if he can continue to grow his game scoring off the bounce, I think that that level is something that Jordan could reach by the end of his rookie contract, and I think that he's going to have a chance to really help the Bucks out in a big way. The third guy to put up a double-double in this game is the least exciting to talk about because we talk about him quite a bit on this channel, and that is Brooke Lopez. Lopez was the one 
regular starter who appeared in this game. At the beginning, they had a graphic that was pretty funny. It was Lopez's, like, 700th start or something like that. And then uh, Thanasis was making his third start. And then Jordan Nora, Axel Tupain, and Sam Merrill were all making their first career starts. So, Brook was clearly the veteran out there, and he did a really nice job in this game. On offense, he wasn't too productive, scoring 12 points on 6 for 11 shooting, but he did a great job defensively, where he was really the base of that zone, and he was able to break up some passes by Knicks players, getting himself 5 steals on the game, and also contest a lot of shots and protect the basket at a high level. He came away with two blocks to back that up. He also did a great job on the boards, which is an area in which we've seen Brook Lopez struggle as he pulled down 10 rebounds. We know what Brook is going to bring to this team long term. He's likely the starter at the center position for years to come, as he does have, I think, three seasons left on his contract. So, Brook is going to space the floor and protect the rim on defense. We know what we're getting from Brook, and uh, that's all there is to say. Sam Merrill was the next guy who got a start in this game. He wasn't great on offense as he had just 8 points on 3 for 10 shooting and 2 for 7 shooting from beyond the 3 point line. But I did think that he showed a pretty solid ability to guard on the defensive end as he once again showed an ability to get physical with players that are bigger than him and do a nice job of keeping those guys in front of him. He's also a smart team defender, which allowed him to thrive a little bit in this 2-3 zone. As a matter of fact, with how comfortable Sam looked, I wouldn't be surprised if Utah State was running some 2-3 in his time in the Mountain West Conference. On offense, like I said, Sam did struggle to knock down some shots, but he did have 5 assists to just 3 turnovers and did a nice job of running the offense as a co-primary ball handler with Thanasis, who also had the ball in his hands for large periods of this game. With Sam moving forward, I view him as a player who's going to be able to space the floor, very similar to Bryn Forbes, while also being able to be a bit more of a ball handler than Forbes is, who can actually run some pick and rolls as the initiator, and perhaps score a little bit off of the dribble more than Forbes does. I've been very high on Sam Merrill ever since he entered the draft process, and I had him graded as a first round pick, so I was elated when my favorite team drafted him with the 60th pick. So I'm looking forward to seeing him continue to develop moving forward, and I have high hopes as to what Merrill can be. Axel Tupain was the fifth and final starter for the Bucks today. I don't have too much to say on Tupain as he was pretty non-productive, scoring just two points on one for four shooting. He also didn't show much on defense and was, for the most part, pretty invisible in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks move on from him to a new candidate on their two-way contract because during his limited minutes, both in yesterday's game against the Celtics and today's game against the Knicks, Tupain has been pretty underwhelming and I think there are some other interesting guys that they could sign that I would be intrigued to see develop. Coming off the bench, we had two usual guys and one guy who has not really been in the rotation. So let's start with the fun player, and that is Mamadi Diakite. Diakite had a pretty solid game, scoring eight points on four for nine shooting while grabbing seven rebounds and blocking two shots. His clear standout play from this game would be the emphatic rejection he had on a Derrick Rose floater in the first quarter. It could have been called goaltending as the ball was pretty close to reaching its peak, but it wasn't, and instead, the Akite came with a highlight reel block for his rookie season. He also made a really fun play in which he grabbed a rebound and pushed the ball down, his cor down the court himself, playing a bit of point setter. He was able to go coast to coast and get a pretty easy layup at the basket on the other end. In addition to that, he made a couple difficult turnaround jumpers from the post. So with Diakite, there's a lot of fun stuff here. He did get in some early foul trouble and clearly does need to iron out his feel for the game a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if he's only been playing since he was 15 or 16, which is a significantly... Uh, different development curve than many of these other guys who started playing when they were in first grade. So with Mamadi, as he continues to gain a greater understanding and feel for the game, I think he's going to continue to improve as a player, and I'm looking forward to that because I do think he can be a solid bench guy for the Bucks as his career continues. It's probably going to take a few years. I'm sorry to break that to all you Bucks fans that are excited for Diakite, but 
I do think that at some point he's going to be a productive big man, both on offense and on defense. Pat Connaughton and Bryn Forbes are the last two guys who got rotational minutes in this game. Connaughton had 12 points on 4 for 9 shooting, 3 for 6 from 3. He played good defense as well and was very good in that 2-3 zone. We know what Connaughton's going to bring. He's a good hustle player, he can knock down shots, and he's one of the more athletic wings in today's NBA, which is a bit surprising considering his um, overall appearance and the type of player that he is as a scrappy wing. You don't usually see those guys having 40-inch verticals, but Pat Connaughton can jump out of the gym and that ability uh, on the fast break as well as uh, spacing the floor and being a plus defender makes him a quality role player for the Bucks, and he's probably the best bench player that they've got right now. So. Um, yep, Pat Connaughton, key bench player. Uh, not too much more to say about him as he's someone that I talk about almost on a nightly basis as he's a rotation regular and a rotation mainstay. Bryn Forbes is the last player who was available in today's game. He struggled to hit shots from the field, scoring 10 points on 3 for 11 shooting and 1 for 6 from 3. But Forbes uh, was without his usual partner in crime in Giannis Antetokounmpo, as usually. If Forbes is in the game, you know that it's going to be some Giannis time because Forbes has established a pretty solid chemistry both in the inverted pick and roll with Giannis as well as in some other movements in which Bryn is able to get some wide open shots playing off of Giannis. So, um, yeah, that's what Bryn is. He's a floor spacer who is, uh, has some great chemistry with Antetokounmpo, so that's what his role is for the Bucks. although I do think that that could be taken by Sam Merrill uh, at a very soon date. I think that I covered everything that I wanted to cover here, so let me know what you thought of this game in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I think that's going to be it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you all again very soon.